Hi, I'm Tane. And I'm Aid, and this is Alter Call, a Married at First Sight podcast. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of MAFS, and this time it is Reunion Part 2. Hi, Aid. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, ready to discuss this season that I really don't know how to put in words. And I feel like we said the same for season 16, but season 17 was like, hold my bear. It was, it was something. It was something. <laughs> I, it was something. I was a little surprised. I've been out of town. So I didn't watch this until a full, what, five days after it aired. And I just think, I don't know how to describe these people. Yeah. But yeah, we are going to talk about it because there's a lot to talk about. But uh, before we get into it, please share what housekeeping we have for them this week. You guys, don't worry. Just because the season's over doesn't mean that we are over. We're not. So we are going to do Where Are They Now? It'll be a little bit late, I guess, but it'll be up uh, next week, early in the week. So look out for that. Um, And then as the weeks go on, we will keep you posted on what we're doing in between seasons while we wait for Chicago. Mm-hmm. We've already seen ads. We just don't know when. So, Tane, what's going up with the previous Chicago people along with everybody else? Uh, well, I have nothing on Chicago people, but uh, I don't really have much. But the big announcement is just that Brianna and Vince announced uh, baby number two. So congratulations to them. That seems like I'm very happy for them. But I'm like, that that just seems so crazy. It's like, we weren't even sure if they were going to have baby number one when they were on their season. Now they're, they're working on two. Yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey. Funny, before we came on to record, she does have like a video talking about being pregnant and still having fibroids because that was part of her concern, I think. I think what she talked about was the high blood pressure, but I don't think she got into detail my memory could be wrong about the fibroids, but she is open about it on social media. But I, I didn't get a chance to listen or watch it, but I think it's something that she's still having to deal with, with her pregnancies. So, um, yeah, congratulations to them. In a way, you know, you knock out the babies back to back and just get through all the phases one time. <laughs> and then God is like, here's your surprise, baby. You can You can't plan for nothing. <laughs> I don't believe it surprise babies, but another conversation another day. <laughs> um, speaking of babies, last time we recorded, you asked me what are the genders for Jamie. She milked it. She absolutely milked it, but she's having two boys. Oh, good for her. Thank you. I can't remember who this person was, but someone explained Jamie's whole thing last time that she took one of those Walgreen gender test. I didn't even know these things existed. That'll tell you if there's a boy present, but it's not like a full thing. So she knew there was at least one boy, but she didn't know what the second one was. And that's what the second announcement was about. Um, Doing God's work, all of you out there. (laughs) Yes. So thank you. Whoever it was for letting us know. Um, Many, many moons ago, I mentioned that Iris from the Charlotte season had moved. She's engaged now, but she never really told us where she moved to. She finally told us where she moved to, and she's in your state, Aid. She's in Dallas. Okay. Everybody's it's one of those Texas. Like, <laughs> oh, Iris was keeping us just waiting for where Iris lives. No hate towards Iris, but I don't care that much where she lives. <laughs> Um, and finally, I don't know, Steve has a, I want to say a podcast, but I'm not sure if it's a podcast or a YouTube show or something, but he recently had Mindy on. So if Steve is still your guy, and I say that because I was such a Steve stand during the season, but I think it's gone. I mean, different now, but there is a podcast, YouTube and an episode that has Mindy on where she talks about the relationship, how nervous she was when it was they were going to do the reveal and all that good stuff. But they're, again, still waxing strong. If they get married, do you think that Lifetime would give them a special? Ooh. I don't know if they have that kind of money. 
<sighs> You're like, this is not The Bachelor. Yeah. And also, it was something that happened outside of the experts. They didn't have a hand in it. And you know how they love to pat themselves on the back. I don't think they would get a special. That's unfortunate because yeah. I'd probably watch it. Maps is just not to show you come on to if you're looking for <laughs> the things. But who knows? I mean, precedence for everything. They might be, but who knows? But I doubt it. All right. This episode, this reunion, um, I don't know. I don't know that we're going to say anything that everybody else hasn't said. But there was a point in the reunion aid where I felt stupid for watching <laughs> this reunion i just was like what the fuck is this like <laughs> why what? whence why like it didn't make any sense i don't think we're getting any answers there's just like it's like watching a boxing match without the punches just verbal sparring and it's not even actual sparring you know <laughs> so anyways we pick up where we left off from the end with the rumors where um, Emily says it's rumors and Brennan says it's a rumor and Kevin is like, I'm sorry, can you clarify what that means? Emily said the ones that she knows that, uh, because Kevin said, what exactly are you referring to? And he says the one that she knows is that she mistakenly read his iPad and had messages where he told Cam and Austin that he wanted to have sex with Lily, her former best friend. And I can't tell you how many times I've read about people being caught with this iPad thing. I am not an Apple phone or Apple product user. Yes, guys, I'm outing myself. I know people look down on Android users, so I don't really get it. But somehow I know it's connected, the cloud or whatever. And I still wonder why people, people who have things to hide still make that mistake. Like, why leave your iPad around if everything's going to be on there? <laughs> Especially someone he seemingly doesn't like. <laughs> I do have Apple products, but I haven't had an, a working iPad in years. I just, you're right. It's really dumb how often people are caught. At this point, though, every single thing that they say, I'm like, is that a lie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it a truth? We don't know. But um, so she said that um, that, that was the one that she read. I'm like, okay, that's factual. You saw that with your two eyes. Then she's like, the night in the hot tub, which was the same night that he wanted to move in with her, that he DM'd Claire's friends. And then also the whole thing about telling Cam to go on a double date. Brennan is like, well, two of these cannot be verified, which is kind of true. Like, <laughs> I don't know in the court of law. <laughs> that's actually an exhibit A or B. But Kevin asks, oh, who is Lily? And I'm like, good. Who is Lily? And she goes, my ex best friend. And I'm like, oh, so this must be the person who she put friend in quotations on her story was the person who spilled about the kiss. But I couldn't remember if Lily was shown during the season and then they did a flashback. So I guess they did. I swear Lily was the one who said that Emily selfish. Selfish. <laughs> That's my next thing. I was like, was that the one who said she was selfish? But that everything seems to track, but okay. So Brennan says that they are unsubstantiated rumors. And in fact, she was the one who wanted to make out with his best friend, but was caught lying, making out with a guy at the bar. I'm like, what best friend? Isn't the one he showed us, wasn't that one married? But I don't know. Is it just best friend that was available to film or actual best friend? Um, Emily was like, well, I told you the truth about the Australian. And I'm like, the way, this is the second time now that she's being flippant about kissing this Australian. And I'm like, again, not standing up for them. But if the guys had said, oh, I just did, she kissed a New Zealander. <laughs> <laughs> they would have use that over and over again but she's always flipping like yeah i did but then i think the story has changed to he kissed her but anyways brennan says he asked her multiple times before she came clean about it and she says well i was scared to tell you because i knew that that would be your an easy out for you and i'm like i don't know what? why you were trying I, I, I could the way that they are hyping up Things that Brennan said versus things that Brennan did. I, look, don't get it twisted. I'm sure Brennan sucks. 
But you cannot stand on your high horse about how terrible this man is because he may or may not have wanted to date other people, screw your best friend, whatever, saying things that may, he probably should have been saying to the guys. And then you're just going to be like, well, I kissed someone, but I didn't tell Brennan because he'd be mad. Shouldn't he be mad if you are saying that you're in a marriage? But then in the other part, it was like, I also did it to prove that he didn't really care. Like we're not in high school where you just don't do things to prove, ha ha, you're wrong. Like I just, just leave. If at this point you have to prove things by kissing other people, leave maybe option. Anyways. Um, and then she goes, I knew that Lily already told you about the Australian. So I told you, and I'm just like, I think everyone just decided to be messy today because, yeah, it is wrong that she kissed someone and did that. But if Lily is her best friend, your loyalty is with your friend. Why would you run and tell the person that we just met eight weeks ago that she kissed someone at the bar? You know, I I, I was annoyed because I had more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. I was also like, you people will drag anybody on the stage. Where's Lily? Mm-hmm. I want to hear oh. from Lily. It's also the first time we didn't have a random family or friend come to the reunion. And this was totally the time to bring all the extras. But yes, we should have had Lily, but maybe Emily told them, if you bring her, I'm not coming. So who knows? So Emily adds that this is the second time that Brennan is protecting Lily. And Brennan says, like, it was not Lily who told me. He was about to say something, and then Kevin interrupted. I'm like, no, I want to know who he says told him. But my bet is he's probably going to say Claire, and then Claire's going to be like, you liar. Yeah. So who knows? So this whole time, commendably, Kevin keeps his mouth shut. They were going back and forth. It was like a volley, like in tennis. They were just going back and forth. He says nothing. He's just swiveling, and he just lets them go at it. And then suddenly he's like, Kevin asks, okay, Emily, what really happened with the kiss? And Emily's like, I'm just going to say it and then I'm going to be done. I'm not going to talk about it again. Like I was at a bar and the Australian kissed me and that was it. I'm like, where was the duck and weave? Where was the no, 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 I'm married? Where was the, like, what is the story that we're supposed to buy into that he kissed you? You know? I. Uh I, I, the hypocrisy is is astounding. It's loud. It's deafening. <laughs> you came here so determined to make a point, and I don't know why you thought you could say nonsense like, "I kissed somebody else," but it really doesn't matter. But your whole accusation against Brennan is that he said he wanted to do something with with other people, multiple other people. Mm -hmm. it's not a strong argument you're making there and your attitude is not great either it's like you're not allowed to question me on the things I decided were not important yeah a hypothetical versus reality and it's also a case of everyone keeps saying like oh this happened wait until you hear this because even before this there were things like wait until you watch this and reveal this and all that and then when it does come out they're not like concrete things that you can go with. It's kind of like the whole, I forget if you're watching Vanderpump Rules, but the whole Sheena and Lala, like, you'll see why we feel this way about Arena. In this episode, you feel, and then it comes out and we're like, um, we, we, we still don't see it, bro. <laughs> we, we don't know what you're talking about. The finale is like next week. We don't know. They'll be like, wait till the reunion. Still nothing. But I don't know. <laughs> um, so he asked Brennan, were you talking to Lily? like talking in the romantic sense. And he says, no. And Emily says, Lily literally told me that Austin said that Brennan wanted to have sex with her. I'm like, do you hear how many people are involved in this? And then she says, Cam told Claire the same thing. And I was like, God damn it. How many times is Claire's name going to be mentioned in every situation? With the best friend, it's, it's Claire. With Cam, it is Claire. It is Claire who saw this. It, the double date, it is Claire. Like, why is there so much involvement in these people's relationships? Especially since her relationship ended at the one month anniversary, four weeks ago. This is why when it's done, just let them go. 
just fade into the wind. Because if you know you have camera time, maybe that inspires you to do something versus if you if it's not going to be on camera, maybe you just fade to the wind and just face your job and not cause any mess, I guess. So, Brennan asks why she didn't bring it up with him, if you heard of that. And she's like, why would I do that? And my first thought is, um, you said you were trying, and five minutes ago you said you didn't want to give him an out, meaning you wanted him to stay in the marriage. So if you were going to stay, wouldn't you be open and say, hey, did you do this too? Did you do that? So you saying, why would I bring it up, is interesting. I mean, I get it. I guess maybe she's assuming Brendan is going to lie or give her nothing, but I think you should still do due diligence and ask and say, hey, this is what I heard. What is your story? I think that gives you more ammunition. Or even today, it would make more sense for you to say, I was scared of his reaction. I was this, I was that. But but what she said, I knew you would use it as a weapon. What? What? Yeah, Kevin reiterates and says, well, did you ever ask him? And she goes, no, because I was like, that can't be true. <laughs> I was like, you can't write a script and read it out and say you wrote the play wrong. <laughs> like, literally, you need to let it play out. She says she doesn't know when they were on a friend reset or not. Like, it was just hot and cold. And she said she wouldn't have stayed if she didn't think they were still trying. Okay, she asked him what he wanted to do on decision day, and his answer was like, he still doesn't know. So to her, they were still trying, and he gave her false hope. He does cop to that, and he says he regrets saying that, and that he thought that they were going to say yes to friendship. (laughs) Kevin swivels. (laughs) He said, on a show called Mary. Said, I, okay. <laughs> and this is why it's difficult to believe that they have much of a relationship with the truth. What do you mean? I thought that we were just going to say yes to being friends. Does that mean, oh, we're trying to make it to the end without pissing each other off? And that's why Emily chose not to confront you? Yeah. As to activities that she's now sort of declaring are cheating? <laughs> <laughs> And and, and let's make a baseline, guys. We are not, this whole girls, boys thing, it's not a defense of the boys. Our baseline is like, all of them are liars. Like, it's just like, okay, liars is a strong word, right? It's like, what does he always say? We don't think they're reliable narrators. (laughs) And, and, (laughs) And I also think the more you try to tell me I lied before, but now I'm telling the truth now. And this other person is bad for lying. I'm not. I'm not buying what you're selling. I. I. I don't care how likable you are. I'm not buying this. And it's I don't ins- think you should be either. It's insane to me that they want us to gloss over the fact that they came up with a strategy. You know, it didn't even really sink in until after part one. What I really watched. Because it was just, oh my God, like, oh my God, like, do we realize the gravity of what they're saying? Because they were saying it so casually and almost like we're justified because the men were so terrible, but there's not really like an accountability. They're saying it, but there's no actual, like, we should, we're in the wrong too. And it's so baffling to me. So, um, uh, Kevin said that did Brennan at any point say, I just want to be friends. Sorry, he said that to Emily. And Emily said, not in those exact words. And then Brennan laughs. I know why he laughs. Because to us, the audience, it was pretty pretty obvious that he didn't want to be there. But Emily truly was trying. And she's in the situation. So, I mean, I don't know how she sees it. So, I think it's fair that if he never actually said it, especially when they had that reset with the accident and all that kind of stuff, he owed it to her to actually come right out and say, especially if it, if it is true that he said, I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to say on decision day 
Although, on the flip side, why would you even want to say yes to someone like this on decision, on decision day? But. I feel delusional because I feel like Brennan, I, I don't want to give Brennan credit here, but I feel like I heard Brennan say multiple times, friendship, friendship, friendship. He even said, we're working on our friendship. I don't know why Emily would continue to believe that he wanted to be anything but just friends. We were sitting there saying, but this is not friendship at first sight. So what is Brennan saying? But I just, I'm like, Emily, he told you. I know he told you. I saw him tell you. On camera. <laughs> the mind can tell you what it is. And she could easily, as we've noticed, and which I think is the cause of dissension among the cast. The, they tend to interpret things in their own way and they always misunderstand each other. And that goes both ways. And so, like I think we said this last episode, someone could say the sky is blue and they'd be like, oh, why are you saying that the shade is gray? Like, why is it not? And they just can't get on the same page. So maybe she thought he was saying most um, romantic relationships that are friends first are better. So maybe if we're friends, then it could grow into something. I'm just guessing. I don't know. <laughs> I I, I want to say, Brennan was, while I think that there was a time where we might have understood, Brennan definitely gave some mixed signals here and there. Yeah. Yeah. So that, no, that much I can give. Because, you know, we always accuse them of, you know, try your best, just doing whatever. So Emily was all in. Granted, for the wrong person, she should have tapped out. But Brennan was giving signs that he didn't want to. I don't want to move in. We should stay in separate bedrooms. I don't want to do this. So, I don't know. So, Emily says, Brennan, you're a grown-ass man. If you wanted to divorce me and leave me, you could have just fucking done it. I'll he give her says, that. <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, how could I have done it when you said that if I left you, you would make my life a living hell? Kevin asks Brennan, okay. I mean, they're going back and forth, guys. Like, I, I just can't. They're going back and forth on a lot of things, just saying the same thing. Then Kevin asks Brennan, like, what did you mean by the whole thing of her being negative? And why did she saying that she hated something affect him so much? He says that Emily always brought the energy down. And Emily interrupts and says, no, everyone calls me smiley. Like my accident, the most traumatic thing, I made it positive. And for her to hear nothing about it until he spiraled at dinner, that that hurts. Brennan says, like, you see this? This is the negativity in full force. And I just want to say, like, I think Brennan chose the wrong word. I don't think he meant negativity. I feel like the word he's looking for is either dramatic or confrontational. Hmm. Because when you say negative, you just think of like a sourpuss who complains about everything. And from what we saw, she was trying to make things work and agreeing to everything that he wanted. So I, I don't know why he of all people, would say that she was negative. Even when she didn't like something, she went along with it. But I who knows? I think Brennan, any attempt to hold him accountable or make him be honest or do anything that he doesn't want to do, and the list of things he wants to do is pretty short when it comes to Emily, um, yeah. is seen as negative. Yeah. Yeah. So she keeps going on about how he never cared about her. He never took her feelings into account. Brennan says, I hope you understand that because I wasn't attracted to you. And she interrupts and she's like, I don't even believe that, by the way, because and then he <laughs> he says, because I didn't want a romantic relationship with you. That's why I acted the way I did. Again, not taking sides, but honestly, that makes a whole lot of sense. It like, does. It does. Like. It, it's, it's black and white. If someone likes you, oh, they're around you. They want to do things. But when they don't and they're quote unquote trapped in an eight week show and, and he doesn't have a good poker face, it tracks that he's treating you like shit. Still means that you're a shitty person because you can treat the person with respect. But that is the whole reason. He says he was trying to find any possible way that he could sever 
savor anything. Sorry, I don't know why I said sever. <laughs> that he could savor anything from this experience, but it was just challenge after challenge after challenge. And she's like, yeah, I don't believe that you are not attracted to me because we made out every day of the honeymoon. And he's like, that's a lie. We made out one time. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really believed Brennan in that moment. I don't know what is true because I think that something could be like a peck or a kiss and she would count that as a makeout or it could just be a actual makeout but Brendan would be like well I wasn't really into it so it doesn't count this is how the season thinks they're just go with their own interpretation so then we the audience don't know what is true or what is not so mighty bold though for someone to say I wasn't attracted to you, which is really not easy to hear. But for you to say, oh, that's not true. (laughs) I mean, how in God's green earth would you know better than the person who's saying it? Not that he should be saying it, but I don't think you can know better than him. But also, they didn't stop tapping out until after the honeymoon. So he was still pretty touchy-feely because I remember when they went to the... I don't know what they went to do. The water and they had that activity. He was like, it's so attractive that she's competitive and all that kind of stuff. And even when her weave got matted, they were still touchy-feely and hanging out. So I believe they were making out then. But again, we weren't there. So we'll never know. Um, he, She says that who wouldn't want to make out with me? And then Brennan is like, it's the delusion. He says... He told her off camera that she is an attractive person. He's just not attracted to her. She's like, "Mm, yeah, I'm still not. I still don't believe you because (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is where we go into a weird type of delusion. (laughs) Everybody is not. Anyways, whatever. She says she still doesn't believe it. But if she says she isn't attracted to him, he would be like, oh, my God, how? I'm the hottest guy in the world. And I'm like, also, um, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get that she's an 8.5. He's a 6. And if they were at a bar, he wouldn't approach her. You guys, I'm not, like, honestly, I'm not shaming Emily or anything. But we can't forget that she's never been in a relationship. So if she's saying that she's an 8.5, she's a this, she's a whatever, at this point, you should know that, you know what, self-confidence is fine. You can be 8.5, but it's not about looks. Like, you can't always just base everything on looks. Like, you're a 2, you're 8.5. Last time she was giving him fingers. Like, it's it's childish. It's, I don't... We're not in high school. Like, I, I, I'm so baffled because she's a 30 year old woman. And when you're still rating people, like, oh my God, I'm a five, you're a two. Like, what? It's not about that, you know? I also don't know what you're winning. Like, what are you winning by saying, I'm really attractive? You're lying. You were attracted to me, but you never tried anything with me. And you said you didn't want to be married to me. I don't understand what she's supposed to have won there. Yeah, you're right. Maybe she's thinking he lost. I don't. It's just very bizarre, and especially since all this happened, I, I'm, there's no timeline on healing. But it's like when someone makes it clear they don't want you. For me, my pride is high. Like even if I have to lie, I am good. I am not going to show you that you hurt me, <laughs> that you annoyed me. I am keeping that to myself. You go live your life. I'm good. But this was just a lot. But I mean, they explained it later that. They'd been repressing it, and this was their time to let it out. But I don't know. There are ways to let things out, but okay. Brennan says that she justifies everything she wants to believe, and it makes it impossible to tell her things that she doesn't want to hear. (laughs) Brennan says that she could not let him go, and she's just screaming, You're a grown-ass man, bro! And I'm like, um... This makes me so terrible. I'm not trying to defend anybody, but if we're screaming that he's a grown-ass man that could leave, we could also say that they were grown-ass people who could have said no to this plan, strategy, or anything. And also, if he was so terrible, also, I wish she she had left him. We've been screaming that, too. Like, I wish that she had left Brennan 
a long time ago because the way this conversation is going is like almost like it was dependent on him and i just wish that she knew that she had more agency and that he was treating her shitty and she could have been like i'm not having any of this anymore and left this is part of the like girl's accountability that's missing i why is it all on him emily in this conversation it is all his fault that they didn't work out because he couldn't admit that he was attracted to her. Like where I feel pretty certain that Brennan told Emily that he was not attracted to her. I feel like we know this and somehow instead of taking from that, Oh, we're not meant to be together. Let me cut my losses and move on. I think that, I think she really made him stay. I, I, as much as they want to say like the boys were manipulating so-and-so and what and what I, I think Emily was also pulling some levers back there. Well, for first off, she said she didn't believe he wasn't attracted. So that's a whole different mindset. She's probably like, he's attracted to me. He just needs a little nudging. (laughs) So she wanted to keep him there. So Kevin said, okay, everyone had a hand in this and we are moving on. And she's like, oh, yep, I'm moving on. I'm doing therapy twice a week. And nope, I'm not dating. She hates the apps. She hates dating. And she will find her person later. Brennan says that he's in a happy relationship and it's great that their communication is open. Emily is yelling, I knew it. I was like, knew what? And she yells, are you open to feedback from her? He goes, yes. And she goes, oh, I hope I can find her so I can warn her to run when you repeat the part, the patterns that you have repeated with me. I thought this was so embarrassing. (laughs) just like, you guys, I just told you, like, I have pride. Like, even if you are I'm missing you badly, I am not going to give you the satisfaction of knowing. But you five seconds ago just said you moved on, you're doing therapy, and now you want to find his girlfriend to tell her to repeat the patterns. But he already said he acted this way because he wasn't attracted to... Oh, this was a lot. Just let it go. But you should see Kevin's face when she said it. Kevin was just like, I can't believe the words coming out of her mouth. I think what I get tripped on with like Emily and just her, her astronomically high levels of hatred is mm-hmm. like, what? Besides not being attracted to you and not wanting to be married to you, which I get it. Those are pretty, pretty bad. Hurtful. Mm-hmm. Hurtful. There we go. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but what did Brennan do to you? Like, you really want to go after his new girlfriend to tell... She can watch the show, babe. Like, yeah. Yeah. And eventually, like, that's the thing. I I think people think that, oh, if you warn somebody or tell them or whatever, it's going to change their mind. No. People are going to date who they want to date. We've seen people who have been accused of heinous things. They get remarried. We've seen people who are in prison. They get remarried. Go watch Love After Lockup. Like, these things are not going to change the minds of the people that are with them. So I'm not even saying that Brennan is not going to repeat it because, oh, he didn't like her or whatever. It's just that if it is going to happen, it is going to happen. But you warning her, it's not going to change anything. She's not going to listen to you. Virginia tried that with Eric's new wife and they're still together. She still went ahead and married him. It's not going to change anything, babe. (laughs) So... Brennan says that he should have ended the relationship in week two. And I don't know what else you want from me. And she's like, I don't need anything from you. I'm just worried about this girl. Kevin says, don't be worried about it. (laughs) (laughs) And when he said that, I had the thought that I think when he said that whole week two thing, I think production should have just called this season a wrap and taken the L on this season. I don't care where they had because Orion and Lauren were like week two. They already had a runaway Brian. They probably knew how Brennan felt by week two. I think they should have just taken the L, wrapped the season, taken the cost and just been like, I don't think this is going to work out. (laughs) But then we wouldn't have had a show. So I can't support any of what you do. I can't support that. I guess I hear you, but it's just, I don't know what is worse or better. (laughs) In, in, in five years time, I wonder how we will look back on this season while rewatching it. (laughs) We'll probably say that it was better than some of the future seasons. (laughs) 
that's gonna be a total. But it's crazy what um your memory does. As a sidebar and also a shameless plug, you guys, I have another podcast, the rewatch Sex in the City, where we rewatch the whole season. And we are gonna have a new episode coming out where we rewatch the movie, the first movie. And it's funny how our memory failed us, like rewatching it all over again. We have different thoughts. Like just rewatching something we thought was not as good, and then the second time around, it just was a different way to look at it. So it'll be interesting years down the line when we watch Denver again, um, what our thoughts are about it. Oh, I'm not okay. watching this again. I'll think about it again. I'm not watching. <laughs> Once it was enough. Be, <laughs> I might be on Netflix, so you're just like, oh, I remember when this happened. Not on this uh, lifetime. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so Brennan said that they were in a hostile environment. It's not the same thing. He didn't want to be with her, and she kept holding him hostage. I don't know why this makes me <laughs> They're going back and forth. Kevin is just nodding vigorously, not saying anything. And then Emily says, "Um, I think America is going to believe me. No offense. Mm. Uh, This woman, I got it. I I probably said it before. I'll say it again. This makes no sense. Mm. You guys are really acute. Like, it's a lot of projection. You guys are clearly interested in what the public perception is going to be, which is why you've shown up here with your pink dresses and your new stories and your, we were deceived or whatever. But for her to say this, I'm like, Oh, this is the game. Mm-hmm. You came optics. into this to, to fix your optics. And you could have fixed your optics by just keeping your mouth shut. <laughs> the less you said here, the better you were going to look saying yeah. America's going to believe me. Is that what this is about? Like, who who looks best on TV? Mm-hmm. It's always not a good sign when you say that. It means you're aware of what's going on. So, Brennan says this is the problem. She thinks it's a reality show, and it's not for him. They are not actors. Brennan says she has to grow up. She's 30 years old, and she should just drop it. And Emily is like, that. <laughs> Kevin interjects and is like, everybody messed up. The deception led to mistrust and the dishonesty and everything went south. Everyone is to blame. Emily is still going on and on and on. And Kevin is like, um, you guys keep going on. We're just going to take a break. And then they go to commercial and they're still going out of the <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the funniest thing. But I will say this. When he says that he thinks that Emily thinks it's a reality show, I am inclined to believe it only because of her antics and the way someone put in the comments, um, on Mass Fan comments, that Emily and Claire, apparently, I think Claire had a burner account or something and has been posting stuff in their maps group. And things like that. And someone said that they had all the proof and they've been trying to send it to Maps Fan. And I'm just like, when you think, like, I'll say this for Becca and Lauren, even though they have like their feelings about this, they don't spend all their days and nights or whatever, <laughs> just some stories and all that. I think Lauren had it. She got it out of her system and she's like, I'm moving on with my life, just talking about this. Emily talks about this incessantly, like posting things, cryptic things, liking things, commenting on things or whatever. So it just seems like there's an investment where there shouldn't be an investment. Like just let it go, release it. It was like a terrible time in her life. Because again, for Emily, I know there's the added, I don't want to dismiss the fact about that accident. Like she took it like a champ doesn't mean again that it wasn't dramatic. There's that extra level of that. And yes, you got a shitty guy. It was a shitty experience. But the best way to move on, honestly, is just let it go. Like, commenting on everything does not solve anything. I think you t- you say that all the time, Aid. It's not going to change perceptions. <laughs> um, We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earn In. 
Earn In is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earn In app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. Whether it's a special gift for a loved one or needing help early with rent this month, make Earn In a part of your financial routine and join Earn In's over 3.5 million customers who say things like, when I think about Earn In, I think about financial stability and security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earn In today, spelled E-A-R, N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earn In app, type in AltaCall on the podcast. When you sign up, it'll really help the show. That's AltaCall on their podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max, see earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. If you're like me and looking to cut back on alcohol this year, Recess Zero Proof Craft Mocktails are the perfect alcohol replacement. They've recreated the cocktails you know and love, like a lime margarita and a grapefruit paloma, which happens to be my favorite, so you can enjoy the flavors and feelings of those cocktails without the booze. Zero proof, zero compromise. Listeners can get 15% off the Recess Mocktail Sampler at takearecess.com slash MAFS. Each can of Recess is a lightly sparkling mocktail made with real fruit and only 25 calories or less. It's a guilt-free way to unwind. They taste just like your favorite cocktails, without the alcohol. Whether you're relaxing after work or hanging out with friends, make Recess Mocktails your drink between drinks or your forever mocktail. Get 15% off Recess Mocktails now at takearecess.com slash altercallmafs. That's A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L-M-A-F-S. So you can enjoy your favorite cocktails without the consequences. Whether you're going through menopause, perimenopause, or just hate that vicious week before your period when you have those terrible cravings and can't seem to find comfort in your body, then you have to try Hormone Harmony. Happy Mammoth, the company that created Hormone Harmony, is dedicated to making women's lives easier by helping you maintain optimal hormone levels. That means using only science-backed ingredients that have been proven to work for women. They make no compromise when it comes to quality, and it shows. Hormone Harmony contains herbal extracts called adaptogens that help the body adapt to any stressors, which includes chaotic hormonal changes that happen naturally throughout a woman's life. With over 17,000 reviews, join the women who keep mentioning how the biggest benefit of taking Hormone Harmony is feeling like themselves again. For a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com by using the code AlterCallMAFS at checkout. That's A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L-M-A-F-S. And we are back. We see a little behind the scenes, and I think this is the best part about the reunions. I think this whole behind the scene thing was a nice touch that they added. I thought it was great. It was very, <clears throat> I, it was very honest, probably too honest for some people. <laughs> so the behind the scenes that we see is Emily going on about I'm delusional, baby. And then we see Claire and Becca they're saying we are brave, we are strong, and Claire is saying we are great people. <laughs> like, okay. Um, the Divine Sisters of the Yaya, or whatever that movie was. <laughs> then Austin saying something about I don't know if I ate something or the coffee hit the wrong way, but his stomach is not right. Emily comes back saying Brennan is a psychopath. Austin comes out the bathroom, the cameras are in his face, and he's like, I don't want cameras on me, which is fair. Like, <laughs> his stomach is bothering him. Like, he was just trying to get through it. So they come back, and Emily is all, like, with the girls. Oh, we'll be, minus Chloe, we'll be fine. Like, we've already gone through so much. Lauren, Claire, and Emily are going on and on about how this is the best part, how they've lived through the manipulation and the gaslighting, and now they get to speak their truth. Then Austin, sorry guys, apparently has the shits 
from his nervous system being shot to hell. That's my interpretation because I don't know what happened. So he goes back to the hotel to rest. I don't know. Just take a pill or something. Um, Kevin says, oh, the guys come out and they come out without Austin. So Kevin says, this season was different and how they try to play the game and they are unhappy and the ladies are getting their say. Kevin says, it is hard to decipher what is real or what is not. But they get the chance (laughs) to say what they want here. Brennan says it's easy to say his intentions weren't there, but it's that you want the marriage to work, but not wanting to be with the person. There are plenty of shows that you can get away with ill intentions, but this show is different. And that's why he felt comfortable going through with this because he basically saw it as free matchmaking. Kevin asked if he should have been more transparent and honest uh, that he was not happy with his match. He says, absolutely, that he did himself a disservice. Kevin says that he wants to let them respond that every, but every time they say something, the women say that they're lying. Brennan says, well, what we do is we challenge them on their stories and it cracks every time. And there's a sense of being told things that didn't happen and it's always mismatched. He asks Orion how his relationship turned into a contentious relationship and Orion, ugh. He's like, once things ended, he was hoping they'll be civil, but it was a lot of push and pull, and now he just hopes the best for her. He asked Cameron about his medical situation, um, and if it was a tap out, and he's like, he laughs. He's like, no, it wasn't. He says that what he experienced is not hereditary. It was what the doctor said, and that it was a stress-induced trauma to the heart. Then he says, literally, a broken heart. And that him announcing the divorce to the group is when the flutter started. And then these people start playing sad music. And then Karen starts talking like really slow. And I mean, I'm sorry he's going through it, but it was a little funny. Because I'm like, what is happening right now? And then he said, since Becca mentioned receipts, I brought receipts. And then he brings out a little paper that we can't even see. And it's his EKG. And Kevin is like, this is where he was shocked back that his heart stopped three times. I I know you have some thoughts to share from a listener. Yeah. But before we do that, look, I sympathize with Cameron and his health issues. Mm -hmm. But the more he tries to convince us that his health issues are caused by his four-week relationship that Mm -hmm. he had with Claire, the crazier the man sounds. Mm -hmm. And it's just very difficult to reconcile when we're being told that he was the mastermind on how to tap out of the show. And he didn't really want to talk to Claire again after that. And this was the best way. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a lot of things. And like everything else, we don't know what's real. Oh, it's not. But shout out to our listener summer who shared that, you know, they had the same thing that Cameron had and it reads like a heart attack. Again, caveat, everybody's body is different. It reads like a heart attack, but it is actually called broken heart syndrome, which is caused by traumatic experiences or large stressful situations. But in very rare situations, will it cause death? And if he did have it, like he should be fine by now, unless he had like a rare case. But um, I think it lends credence to the fact that, you know, he might've been playing it up. I don't, we don't, I don't think we doubt that it happened to him. I don't, do you doubt that it happened at all to him? He had a medical event with his heart. That part, yes. I, I totally believe. Yes, I think it had. And, but I think he found a way to play into that. And I'm just going to see that. I think that Cameron is either an aspiring cult leader or he was one in his past life. He has all the makings of one. I mean, maybe I'm not meant to be. In, I wouldn't follow that man anywhere. <laughs> well, every cult documentary. I don't think I follow any of them, but they found people. So, <laughs> And he was able to convince people to go along with his plan. So he, he has an internship on this record. <laughs> so anyways, um, <clears throat> 
He learned a lot of lessons. He says he learned a lot of lessons and he learned to advocate. For... <laughs> Sorry, this is comical. He learned to advocate for himself and people aren't how they present themselves. I haven't done this in a while, but my husband walked in. He had already seen the pink before. Then he saw it and he was like, wait, the men are doing blue too? And I don't think I realized that they were all wearing blue except Michael. <laughs> the same way Chloe wasn't wearing pink like that. But was it on accident because they literally have no um, creativity in their fashion? Oh, or... I, I, I don't know if they intend. It's just coincidental that there was a blue and pink just lending more and more to the childish natural schoolyard whatever is happening on season 17. But I just thought it was funny. <laughs> oh, this season should be in a time capsule. Um, But anyways, Cameron's section was very soap opera-ish. Um, Michael clarifies that the dumping was not staged. That's the one at the altar, because apparently people thought that the show staged it. Um, Brennan says that he learned that there's a way to be honest and truthful while being respectful. And that was the end of the segment, just like the girls. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Bye, guys. Then Michael is telling Cameron, this is behind the scenes, that he did good. And then we pan to Lauren saying none of these men are men they will otherwise talk to and that they are hideous inside and out and they are letting this low budget men drive them crazy and Claire is just filled with glee. Just yee! You didn't mention two specific brands that Lauren mentioned that, that they are. They are Timu and Sheen men. <laughs> oh man. They really hate each other. So Cameron is like, he almost couldn't make it, that he's maxed out, that he's just a shot to his central nervous system, and he can't take any more medication for at least an hour, that he needs to lie down. How is he going to survive what's about to happen? What's about to happen is all of them being on the stage again. And they tell him, you know, go rest. It's not worth it. And then he should come back and see how he feels with the experts. I'm sorry. I totally thought that this was a, another tap out to get out of this. Like, what are all these coincidences? We're supposed to just think like it just magically happened now. On one hand, I'm like, oh, this is another cop out. But I'm like, if I'm tired of this shit, I mean, they must be tired too. I don't know. Cameron enjoys this. <laughs> but he just didn't have time to get his story together. <laughs> Um, as they're headed to the stage, Emily is telling Claire, no negative energy. Like, you need your bad bitch energy. All the men can go suck a dick. And they're hot. And these men are out of, and they're out of their leagues. Uh, oh, God. Again, childish. But they come back and Kevin intros. And his intro starts with, in a season full of deception, we are going to end with some truth. <laughs> The one thing Kevin made sure in this reunion, you all are going to know that there was deception this entire season. He's, he's like, just before we start talking, just remember that this is a pack of liars. <laughs> well, they start with Becca, and she says, listen, I've said what I needed to say, and I just want to move forward. Michael says that he thanks Chloe and appreciates her for sharing her thoughts in hindsight and that he just wants to reiterate his apology to her that he didn't give them a chance. Lauren says that's what reflection sounds like. Brennan says like they had good intentions, but the relationships didn't work and beating up everyone about who was wrong or right, that they need to take responsibility for what they have done and move on. Kevin asks what he wants to take responsibility for and he says not expressing his full truth to her and he should have been more transparent. Emily says she doesn't believe him, that he had opportunities to say so and it's a fake apology. Kevin had had enough by this point because his facial expression. Brennan was just like, this is toxic. And Emily says, yeah, I appreciate you for taking accountability for whatever it is you're taking accountability for. And Lauren says, amen. He asks Claire, and she says, well, you know, they had a true teammate mentality, but it was based off lies, resentment, 
a rocky foundation and it wasn't real. Lauren says, no shade, but sometimes you need to let it go and you don't get the apology that you're looking for. Claire says they know the truth and she can't do the song and dance. Like, believe me, believe me or not, I don't care. Oh, I did want to say it looked like she had curled her hair differently for part two. Well, I think it's a wig, actually. So I think she'd done it differently, but it looks much better this time because part one, it looked like she was on that 70s show. I didn't quite like it. Hmm. I'm sorry. So, to think, sorry, continue. But we'll get to this because I'm fairly certain that they did this in at least two days. But could it have been three? Oh, I didn't. Oh, oh, I didn't think about that. I didn't think it was a couple of days. Oh, it was definitely more than one day. Um, Because Austin shaved his beard? Yes. Like he went home, took a nap, and shaved off his whole beard? I don't buy that. Um, I (laughs) think they came back for a second day. Uh, I also think that's part of the reason why they were so upset is they thought they were done. And then because those two got sick, they had to come back a second day. Ah, okay. Well, that makes sense. So Emily starts to say that she wants to point out why don't we believe Claire? And this happened in after party. Kevin swivels again and is like, huh? How are we not believing Claire? And she's like, that people want to keep digging and digging. Kevin says, like who? And she says, like you. And I know she was about to say Keisha. Or she said it and they cut it out. But Kevin is like, what do you think I'm digging for? She says, oh, I just feel like there's no grace shown to her. It just honestly felt like two conversations. Like Emily just wanted to get this out. But this was not in relation to anything because no one was even questioning Claire. No one said, Claire, you're lying. No one said it, whatever. But, and if you're going to say Kevin is one of the people who's digging, he wasn't even asking her a question. So where did this come from? What this came from, these people do this every time, every time. Claire went backstage and said, well, probably when she had her one-on-one with Cameron, she recounted the conversation in a way that she was probably aggrieved. And they are always at the ready to defend each other's honor over things that they were not there for. Yeah. So she she probably came in ready to like defend Claire's honor for segments that she was not there when they were shot. Okay. Yep. I can see that. And then, uh, yeah, she says, I feel like there's no grace shown to her. And like, does that like translate to you? And Emily must have confused the fans for Kevin because I'm like, what? Because yeah, people are digging into Claire online, but I I don't know that she should have just said that, not that Kevin was the one digging. But Kevin shows why he gets the big bucks and he's like, you yelling at me is not going to rattle me. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. You disrespected the show. And she's like, no, 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 no. He says everyone was a part of the deception. You had a husband who hurt you, but everyone went along with the scripting thing and that hurt the process. Brennan is grinning all the way on the other side. (laughs) Kevin says, it's unfortunate that we couldn't have paused and said, whoa, this is crazy and this is wrong. And Becca is like, yeah. I'm like, oh. She said, yeah. And Becca said, you know, we did that eventually, but to even do that took so much strength and courage. Uh, What? Strength and courage to tell the truth while you're accusing other people of lying. That's no strength and courage, dear. (laughs) You know, this is like when celebs give birth and then they take a picture, you know, like she's so brave. She took a picture. Postpartum. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, <laughs> Lauren says, you know, a lot of the frustration is coming up because they felt like they couldn't talk about it when it was happening. So now they're like, oh, I need to get it out. I feel like we've been through this many times. But once again, Kevin asked Brennan, your marriage, why do you think your marriage failed? And I'm like, this man has said it many times. He wasn't attracted to her. Didn't want a romantic relationship. He thinks she's negative. So many things. <laughs> but he said, <laughs> I was just over it at this point. And we weren't even halfway. He said, oh, they had hurdles. And when he first met her, he thought she was a pretty girl. But then talking to her friends, they were like, she likes one night stands. She gets ghosted all the time. She's selfish. I'm like, oh. 
Alyssa 2.0? What? And Emily says she doesn't think they were saying that. And I'm like, we have it on camera, friend. Your friend did call you selfish. And this is where roll the tapes comes in handy. Like, we need this on hand where people are rolling the tapes. Although, even if they played it, she'll probably be like, well, it is Lily. She had an agenda anyways. But this was before we even knew who Brandon was. So, you know. Emily says she doesn't think they were saying that. Um, He says he was turned off at this time after he heard all the things that they were saying about her. And he also had no idea where her money goes. Emily starts doing that clapping thing that you mentioned that she comes <laughs> off beat. And she's like, I make more money than you do. And he says, no, don't you lie about that. And I, I'm missing something. I don't know what someone said, but Claire was like, that's fair. But Emily is like really upset. Um, and Brennan said he held his negative feelings towards her. And that was week one. Becca asks, like, can you see how that can drive someone crazy? Kevin jumps in and is like, um, Becca, that's something that you suffered in your relationship. And he's, she's like, absolutely. So she says, like, some, having something like that happen to you turns everything into a mindfuck. And honesty is the best policy. And he didn't let the dominoes fall. And he was trying to control everything. And he said, that's fair. That's the other thing. This episode could have been called That's Fair. It could have been called Accountability. But there are so many words used multiple times. Lauren said he came in saying divorce was not an option. And maybe that hovered somewhere in his mind and he didn't want to give up. Emily's crying at this point saying that she wishes that he said all these things to her. And she will not apologize for being herself. Orion always has to talk. I don't know why he had to interject, but he's like, this is so hard to hear that he's sorry Emily is hurting, and this is feeling really heavy for him. Chloe it's not says, about you. It's not about you. <laughs> Chloe was like, actually, that's not enough. Like, it's not enough that it's heavy, that it fucking sucks. That never in her life has she been in this position where she has to feel so much hatred, resentment, bitterness and anger all at once and if this is not a testament to just being authentic and just saying what's on your mind i don't know where there is she says if there's anything we can do walking out of here is to say to i'm never going to put anyone over myself kevin says okay moving on there was laughter and fun and they play a montage that i don't think depicted laughter and fun you know what do i it was an attempt it was a try but it was so funny because even with this little like, oh, look at all the fun times that were had, the the depressingness and the hostility that these people have made this reunion, that was still on all of our minds as we were watching all the so-called fun times. Yeah. It was like a, well, I mean, they were laughing. So I'm like, oh, okay, I guess you had to be there type situation. <laughs> yeah. So, um. We come back to some peace and quiet in the form of Lauren and Orion. Because as much as they're, they've are they got their own stuff, like nothing matches the Emily and Brennan and the Claire and the Cameron toxicity. Uh, Kevin tells us that when he, he thought that they had a special connection, connection that, oh, that he thought Lauren and Orion had a special connection that made us think that they could go the distance. And then Orion and Lauren come out Kevin asks how they're doing. Lauren says really well. She's been traveling. She's been seeing family. I think this too sometimes, like when you're describing your life, I mean, it's like, oh, that's nice. Like, it's not very exciting, but it's all good things to do. <laughs> it's it's not newsworthy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Orion um, says that he's been happy and getting back to normal life, work, family, and friends, which raised the question. I was like, what does Orion do for work? Because that was one of the mysteries that we never did quite solve. Um, he's an electrician or something, something he needed to get, um, accreditation, but he didn't have one in Colorado. He still had it in New York. So then my question was, so did he get accredited or got his license in Colorado in the meantime, or has he been working on real estate? Like, it was kind of, I just wanted to know what his work was. Um, oh, yeah. He was in school, actually. Yeah, too. Yeah. Follow-up questions that were never asked. So Kevin asks Orion, like, when you first saw Lauren, what were you thinking? And he's like, he was attracted to her smile and to her teeth. 
Um, Lauren, he asked Lauren what she was looking forward to in married marriage. She said she was looking forward to like what she'd heard from married couples, like having fun times, watching a relationship grow. So Kevin decides to go back to the sex off the table conversation that they had at the honeymoon, which, you know, we just sort of watched Orion find out that Lauren had sex two months ago and he had a sex a year and a half ago. And clearly Orion had a problem with this and he got very nasty in that conversation. So Kevin calls him out on it. He's like, what were you thinking? He's like, I can't recall. First, there's a long silence. Then he's like, well, I can't recall my thoughts at the exact moment. He had an expectation that once the process starts, that no one is going to be doing anything, I guess. But for him personally, he wanted to come fully as himself with nothing in between. This all sounds like nonsense. Kevin, my hero, is like, but nothing happened after the match. So she did come fully as she was. So how does that stop her from being fully herself? And Orion is like, it doesn't. And Kevin's like, I'm not questioning your morals, but Orion says that he fucked up the conversation and that he knew that she felt ganged up on. Kevin asks what it means. And there's another long silence. And then Lauren (laughs) says that she thinks his apology is genuine, but it doesn't take away the confusion and the hurt that she felt at the time. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. I think that should be more a response to some of these apologies that get thrown out, both in life and on TV. Someone can apologize all they want. Being sorry is a worthy thing, but you can't take things back. And an apology doesn't take things back. Yeah. Yep. It happened. It happened. So Orion apologizes again. He's sorry he made her feel that way. Um, Kevin asks if Orion gave up too easily. And Orion tries to say that he gave up too easily on the process. And Kevin says which would be the relationship. And Lauren says, Orion sees the process and the relationship as two different things. So (laughs) Orion says that he views the process as what the experts can do in times of turmoil, and he never gave that a chance. So Kevin asks again, did you bail on the marriage too quickly? Orion says, unsure. Kevin is losing his patience. He's like, if you left the process, then you left the marriage. Like you were married. For real, for real. Married. (laughs) I kind of enjoyed this. (laughs) Uh, Kevin asks if Lauren is sad about how it went. And she said she's sad about the partner she was matched with. And there isn't a right or wrong way, but it does require two willing participants. She doesn't think he was ready. Um... (laughs) But also, but no one knows what they're ready for until they try it. Then there's this whole thing about how Orion is younger. Maybe he saw it as a learning experience. I mean, I have listened to to, and watched too many seasons of Maths. And hearing people wax poetic about how much they've learned for four hours straight is not my idea of a good time. Mm -hmm. Uh, He asked Lauren if she's past it. And she says, yes. He asked if they're friends. She's like, I don't care to have one. She says, I wish him nothing more than what he deserves. When Lauren said this, I said to myself, I will put this curse upon all my enemies. Yeah, it's very poetic. (laughs) It's very poetic because I don't know who said we have to be kind to people that we feel indifferent to or that we don't like. Like, I wish you the best. What if I don't wish you the best? It's my right. So I wish you nothing more than what you deserve. Make of it what you will. It's not as if I'm the one who's deciding what you deserve. The universe, God, someone else is deciding what you deserve. I'm just saying, I hope you get what you deserve. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin asked her what that means. Sorry to go on a side tangent, people. There is an exhibit in the um, National African American Museum of History and Culture in Washington, D.C., and it's called gestures of dismissal and i always remember it because nini leaks is there and there's a picture of her waving her hand away in a in a sign of dismissal and that is what came to my mind when lauren did a little thing with her hand (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) when kevin asked if they were a good match (sighs) then lauren keeps on going with her poetry because kevin is asked 
Um, Kevin keeps on just pinging on. You guys could have worked. Should you have worked harder? Could have worked. Could have worked. Could have worked. So he asks if it bothers her. And she says, you can only meet someone as far as they have met themselves. (laughs) I love it. I love it. (laughs) So Orion is like me where he's just like, can we just end this? Like, leave us alone, Kevin. He's like, they've moved on. Everybody's moved on. Let's just move on. So Kevin asks if they're dating. Lauren is very happy, healthy, and loving place in her life. She kind of fakes us out. Mm-hmm. She won't change regardless who enters and exits. Basically, at the end of this, we don't know if Lauren's dating someone or Lauren's not dating someone. She decides to be very mysterious about it. I think she's not um, in an exclusive relationship. She's just dating multiple people. Uh, Orion says that he is seeing someone. Kevin sounds so surprised. <laughs> Oh, do you believe that? <laughs> I can't tell if Kevin is surprised because he's like, Orion, how exactly did you attract somebody? Or if he's surprised because he thinks that he's lying like you do. What do you think? <laughs> um, I, I do think that he's probably dating somebody. I'm actually questioning all the men because so far, except Austin, they're all saying that they're dating people. I didn't know if I believed Brennan, but I, I'm more likely to believe that Brennan is dating someone. But um, who was the other person that said they were dating someone? I was like, huh. We got Orion. Special. But Cameron didn't say he was dating someone, did he? Oh, I thought there were three of them that said so. Okay, maybe I'm misremembering. But I definitely didn't believe Orion. That much I'm sure. He talks a lot about how... He learned not to basically to better a communicator and say things that make sense. And then Kevin ends a segment. Oh, Lauren does a, if you love it, like it, I love it, which, okay. I mean, I guess that's better than saying, I'm going to call her and tell her how terrible you are. Um, (laughs) Um, Thank you to the person who sent the message that it was a full circle moment because I I say that a lot. So when she said it, she thought it was a full circle moment, but if she likes it. She loves it. That's the motto for everyone. <laughs> That's why you don't have the energy for anyone. <laughs> it, it's also a way to be like, you own your own choices and I'm not getting involved. Mm-hmm. And you know, I kind of think that maybe Lauren and Orion's is different because we have theirs on camera. They weren't so trying to fake us out in any way. Yeah, and I, I I do think everyone should remember that in the beginning when they were showing receipts, we see Lauren explicitly saying, I'm out. And I kind of feel like they didn't do enough of a good job of every time they say in the season of Deception, poor Chloe and Michael, they never <laughs> explicitly went out their way to say except. <laughs> it just sounds like the whole season because Lauren sent in a text message like, I'm tapping out. Like, I think Claire even said, Lauren is out. I don't know if she means like, they decided to divorce or she was out of the plan or whatever. But I think it's just a good thing to call out with this whole deception thing. I think it is too that we, I think we keep on saying eight and is it really only six? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, guys, we'll be right back. So we come back to people backstage again. Orion is like, the fucking comments. They bleeped out the F word. Um, And I mean, when people say things like, if you like it, I love it. And you can only meet people where they have met themselves. It's a rare person who can come up with that stuff in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And poor Orion, as per usual, just wasn't up to the task. Um, Lauren backstage is saying that she's not in the Build-A-Bear business as in, I'm not going to like make a man who he needs to be. It's now time for the experts to come. Um, <laughs> before the people come out, Kevin chats with them a little bit. So Dr. Pepper is like, well, I didn't know that there was a plan where they fed us what we wanted to hear. And Pastor Cal is like, we're just trying to match people. And if they're not honest, what are we going to do? Dr. Pia says that she's a clinical psychologist. She does just doesn't want to play one on TV. So how can she help someone if they're not honest? So everybody comes out. 
And Kevin starts with like Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper is like, it's been distressing to hear how unhappy everybody is. She She's not here to parcel out who did what to whom. Cause she's like, well, we've had enough of that. Mm-hmm. But she's learning that she had very re- little real information about what was going on. And she's hoping they can all move forward. No one wants to see you unhappy and angry. Becca tries to say sorry that she didn't get to know them in an authentic way, but that she didn't feel safe enough to be her authentic self. And it's a confusing situation to be in when you're trying to protect the person that you like. Claire says the feelings were fight or flight or advocate for ourselves. And now we're in a place where they felt they were silent, but in filming, she couldn't advocate the ways that she wanted. Dr. Pia asks, well, who was doing that? Becca says, the men. Their heightened anxiety was making us wonder if we should be anxious. And Emily says that there was a similarity, that the men were poisoned. Well, I'm sorry, the men were paranoid and all of them handled it differently. Every single time with these three, and I'm going to say the three, Mm -hmm. it always comes back to the group experience, not the individual experience. Mm -hmm. Dr. Pia, go ahead. I was just kind of so going to say, like, it's also important to note that when they say this, or when Claire says this silence, manipulated thing, the other two liked their husbands. She didn't. So if it wasn't for self-interest, what was she trying to do? Like, eventually when they say things like, you know, trying to keep the relationship, trying to keep their man happy or whatever, what was she trying to do? She didn't like the man. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense. I think the part that we never really hear is that as much as she's like, oh, the guys, the guys, I don't think Claire wanted to come off as someone who didn't like her husband. I and know, that's what that's, she was protecting. That's where the roll the tape comes on. Oh, you're wearing those shorts? Oh, don't touch me. Oh, you didn't roll my suitcase. Like you were nitpicking him. What was that about? then that would be the point where Kevin should have asked her, so at what point were you attracted to him? Because you seem pretty irritated by him. (laughs) But anyways, wishful thinking. I'm sorry, go ahead. Dr. Pia does this thing that reminds me of when something many years ago went very wrong at work and some leader person came to me and the person I was working with and was like, what could I have done to make sure that things didn't go wrong? And after she walked away, the person I was working with was like, that's some lamb shit, which was some... (laughs) leadership Mm -hmm. program where instead of yelling at people when things go wrong, you do this whole, like, what could I have done to make it easier for you? So Dr. Pia is like, so what, how could we have done this differently? We said, you can call us. What got in the way? And Dr. Becca was like, I'm sorry, Dr. Becca. Becca was (laughs) like, (laughs) how uh, expecting us to know that this would be the right move. And, Pastor Cal and Dr. Pia do, I'm sorry, Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper do some excellent facials when Becca is like, well, how was I supposed to know to call you? Um, (laughs) (laughs) And Emily says we wanted the marriage to work so bad. That's why we didn't reach out. I felt bad for the experts because these people, these women can never own their shit. Yeah. We didn't call you because we weren't interested in being authentic. We were interested in maintaining a look, whether it was for someone else or for ourselves. Oh, no, it wasn't for us. It was for them. It's all their fault. Yeah. Like, take responsibility. We didn't call you because we didn't want to. Yeah. And and Jamie um, had a comment on this um, where she said something like, sorry, this is kind of like a load of crock. You can always tell like Jamie's trying to be respectful, but also trying to say the truth. And she's like, if you trusted them to match you with a stranger, why then would you not trust them to help you through trouble with the said stranger that you now know? And it makes sense. Like the whole thing doesn't make sense. Just wanting to take things into your hands. Like what is the worst that will happen if you told the experts, even if they call them out. And if you think they're going to react so badly, again, why would you want to be married to someone like that? I just can't walk through the thought process of what they were thinking and how this was going to end up. Dr. Pepper wraps it up. Well, you know, you guys are, we don't think of you as wilted flowers. You have print presence and you have accomplished a great deal. 
Uh, so uh, why couldn't you, you know, speak, speak up if you wanted to speak up or say what you want to say or be real? There's really no answer for that, but this is the best because Kevin finally is like, hey, Chloe, remember you? You here? And Chloe's like, look, I didn't do none of this. Michael and I weren't in a scheme. They were trying to navigate a marriage. They definitely did not have the same experience. Um, and that they were sheltered from whatever nonsense was going on with the rest of them. They were giving looks while Dr. Pio was talking to each other or at each other. I, I guess. <laughs> you mean Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper or the girls? No, the girls. Well, Pastor Cal's looks was when they were talking. Pastor Cal was just like, oh, these people are getting on my damn nerves. But he wasn't <laughs> going to say anything. But he was just really like, I don't understand what you guys are saying but uh and honestly in a season of first i don't understand why we didn't interview any producers i don't care like how did this slip through the cracks how did no one no one could tell that something was off something was going on but again wishful thinking at minimum the producer who we had to hear so much about should have been interviewed (sighs) there's a lot of like repeats with pastor cal and dr pepper and dr pia Everybody should go to therapy, healing, journey, healing. Okay. Lessons learned. So then the experts have a sit down with the guys. Austin and Cameron have recovered from the ailments. This is what makes me think it's another day. Austin got rid of his beard. Uh, That's really all the evidence that I have, but also the fact that like Cameron and Austin are sick. Now they're better. Dr. Pia is like, I'm shocked that there was a plan. Is there, you know, Dr. Pepper asks, oh, Cameron was a mastermind and that convinced everybody. And Cameron is like, hold up. <laughs> He's like, who did I convince? Well, what I heard is that it began with the men, not the women. Cameron is like, those are provable lies. There's no plan. He never talked about what the men should do with their marriages. Deception, optics. Um, he's like, well, they keep on accusing us of like colluding and all this other stuff. And they're the ones showing up with the color matching outfits. What they're doing is what they said we did. Then Cameron, this is where I look people. There is something wrong with Cameron. I, I, he starts saying that he's ashamed. And Dr. Pepper's like, for what? And he says, this thing makes me feel like I've learned nothing in my life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was like weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's manipulative. Like, in his sick way, he's getting a kick out of this. Honestly, Cameron is the Tom Sandoval of the season. <laughs> tell, tell us more. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, as much as Tom did something bad, he's not taking accountability. He's saying all the things, but he truly doesn't believe that he's done anything wrong. He thinks that he saved the show and he created a storyline and everyone should be thanking him that they have something to talk about. I think Cameron is the same way. Cameron is going through the motions, except that Cameron might realize that he did something bad, but he doesn't really give a shit. And I think he says things like for like shock value, like thinking back to just when um, the friends and family came and Cameron was just like, how do you tell a dying man that I'm getting married? And I'm just like, what? Do you just blurt out things to see people's faces? Like he likes the reactions that he gets from it and just like putting on a show. Even from the wedding when he was always being like a showman and cracking these unfunny jokes. He's the one who said the reservation thing. And you know they didn't talk about the whole thing with Lauren and Orion. The R word situation. Uh, oh, we didn't. You're right. They didn't. They didn't even bring it up. They didn't even, like, it was just, so I don't know if maybe that's what Orion was referring to when he said it's it's a dead horse that stopped beating it. I'm like, I wonder if that's like a Frankenstein, but probably not. But yeah, there's just a lot of things that were just skimmed over and it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Because that would have been a good question to ask. Like, Orion, why didn't you have a strong reaction when Cameron said that and Versus when Lauren said this and stuff like that. And then he, this is his time to speak about it. Unless he decided that he didn't want to talk about it anymore. So, but that's how I think he's the sound of all of the group. I, I like where you're going with this. Um, with the, yeah, the weird emoting. I don't know how to describe it. It's fake. It's acting. He's 
aiming for a daytime Emmy in the soap opera. You know how like psychopaths don't know like this is what you're supposed to feel, and you're like, wait, this is what normal people would do, right? Like they'd be sad. Am I sadding? Am I sadding good right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> Am I remorseful? Am I doing remorseful right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's more talking. Dr. Pia says in a roundabout way that everybody needs to go to therapy. I mean, everybody <laughs> does need to go to therapy, but that doesn't mean it's going to work. She's like, oh, you, you guys should get some individual support is what she called it. Mm-hmm. Then Michael gets a chance to talk about how he was not part of this shit show. He talks a lot about healing and growth and as bad as things may have been, hopefully everybody got some healing and growth. I mean, I was shocked by this last thing. Brennan apologizes to Dr. Pia. And I was like, are you taking lessons from Cameron's book? Because look, people, I don't believe Brennan was sorry. Um, Really? I don't. (laughs) Uh, maybe he heard what everyone else was saying. Well, I don't know when they filmed it, so maybe not. There was maybe I don't know if it aired, but who knows? He did admit to being controlling, which I I give him props for that. Um, and he used I a lot. I did, and Doctor Pia gave him props for saying for taking ownership. And Kevin's like, well, on that note, let's wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> So backstage, Claire is trying to gas up Becca. Like, I don't think these girls, I think it's supposed to read supportive. It doesn't. Yeah. It just reads weird. Uh, it's not. I mean, they're still waxing strong even right now. <laughs> they're hanging out. They're even, because I think it was like Lauren's um, mom's year anniversary and they sent flowers and I think Lauren captioned it like for a bunch of quote unquote mean girls. You sure bring a lot of love to my life. They go out together. Emily and Becca are like besties, besties. So, I mean, they found friendship. But I will say this in the future, when we have like these mass things, who from this season of the pink ladies do you think they'll invite? Hmm. Back? I think they will definitely invite invite back Claire and Emily and Lauren. You think so? I think they won't invite Emily because of what they went through with Lindsay. <laughs> but that's why they invited Lindsay back. Yeah, but they learn now and they never <laughs> invite her again. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. I would want them to invite Emily because I really want to understand, is this hatefulness that she has going because of her present circumstances or is this who she is? I think it's a mix of both. I think she is really hurt. You can see that when she goes back and forth with crying and then being angry. But I also think she does have some growing up to do. There's a little immaturity there. And also, I don't know. I don't know if if technically like she hasn't been in a relationship. This is technically like her first heartbreak. So this is all like new emotions that you had to navigate on national television. I I'm, I feel sorry for her that this is what, whatever she had going on with Brennan is what she's going to call a relationship. Unfortunately, it can't because it's actually official, official. <laughs> so as they're waiting around to do their big group scene, Cameron is telling um, Brennan that the girls weren't even friends through filming. I'm like, I'm not buying that. (laughs) Emily and Claire were definitely friends through filming. Brennan says that Emily hated Claire and he regrets getting Emily to like Claire. I have many questions there. No answers. I think it might be true in the very beginning. Because the very beginning, it was Claire and Lauren that were pretty close and then I think later on as we started everything started falling apart we started seeing them um uh, getting close. I'm I'm not saying that it's true. I'm just saying like it, it could be possible but with these people again we don't know. It could have mm-hmm. been at first at first glance oh they weren't feeling each other and then as things say deteriorating they had to turn to each other and then they say liking each other. 
but I that whole I made them like each other. That's like him saying I saved her life. <laughs> so they sit down and Claire looks at I'm not even sure who she was looking at. And she says, Don't look at me like that. And I was like, Oh, this is gonna be great. Kevin tries to say, We're gonna have a civil, elevated, intelligent conversation. And the funny thing is, this is all pregame. So Kevin is getting his head um, powdered while he's telling them we're, we're going to be nice. So he tries to do a normal introduction. And he says, let's talk about the double date situation. So we watch the clip and Claire tells Emily, Brennan said he wants to go on a double date with Cameron. Emily calls Brennan. Brennan says, that's a lie. Cameron at pizza night is like, I take responsibility. I instigated this. Kevin says, what's the story? Oh, we, we never get to it. So Cameron says, Brennan and I went over to Union Station. We were at a bar. He says maybe a week or two back. We never find out what time reference he's using for a week or two back. Was it a week or two before decision day? Was it a week or two after? I don't know when the week or two was. Emily's like, this is so embarrassing. I was like, okay, to who? Cameron is like, should I keep on going on? Claire says, go ahead and continue to lie. Brennan asks, what is he lying about? So far, all he has said is he and Brennan were at the bar. That's all he said so far. Claire says, Brennan wanted to fuck her best friend. You told Cameron and Cameron lied about it. Okay, so apparently there wasn't two girls at the bar. <laughs> then Claire starts, talking, <laughs> Claire starts talking about a hot tub conversation. Was it true or was it not? And then he asks what the accusation is, which is honestly a fair question. I don't know what the accusation was. And Claire says, just continue to lie. Brennan says, well, the first is that I was fucking someone else. Then it was that I wanted to fuck someone else. Which is it? Fair question. Claire is like, either way, you're in a marriage, Brennan. And I ask myself... Okay, so what about the Australian, if, if Brennan's in a marriage? Was the Australian before this or after this? And where is Lily in all of this? Because Lily's role in all of this machinations is never completely clear in the whole two hours we have to watch this. Yep, and also Abe, the Australian kissed her. So it doesn't <laughs> count, remember? Mm. Brennan is like, I never fucked anyone. I never said I wanted to fuck anyone. I don't know what she's talking about. Emily says something about fucking our best friend. I think that means Lily. He says, you kn- said before that you knew that that wasn't true. Emily says it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> if I say it's true, then it's true, damn it. <laughs> Claire says that they can continue scheming. Lauren says, Cameron, you can look bewildered trying to equate like this pack of your husband's, our husband's suck. If you basically, she says you can't um, equate all of us coordinating wearing pink dresses with whatever the fuck that you guys were doing. That's a lot of f bombs. You know, I can't remember. They were all bleeped out, weren't they? I don't remember them being used. So if you're saying it though, it must have been bleeped out. <laughs> I mean, it's not confusing what they're saying though. They were all f bombs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which then made me think, are they watching each other's segments? Because it was in the therapy segment where Brennan was the one who talked about how they're the one wearing pink dresses. So either she heard it or she saw it, right? Um, uh, I had that thought, but I was like, it looks like Lifetime is not like rich enough to give them TV screens. Because I think they would have shown us. And when they come back, they ask them, how's it going? So I don't think they're watching each other. But I don't think they need to watch to know that they've been wearing pink this whole it's like a known thing since after party right right but the idea that the guys are saying that them wearing pink is colluding the same way whatever they did was colluding for lauren to fight back against that assertion i'm like well where did you hear that the guys were accusing you of something um yeah i i just figured it wasn't necessarily them accusing of something i don't know it's just them just assuming they mentioned it one other time though i can't remember where 
So while they were there. Cameron says that everything Lauren says is a jam. Lauren is like, come again? Baby, I ain't jabbed you yet. Now keep poking the bear and I'll bite the fuck back. Stop playing with me. You don't scare me. Emily is like, we all know who you are. We read your crazy text messages. I will give her that. I have seen a couple screenshots of Cameron's text messages. They are a little nuts. Lauren. (laughs) Cult leader. Cult leader. (laughs) Lauren says, try me if you want, but I'm not the one or the two. I can't believe these people watched Lauren argue with Orion at the honeymoon and still try her. You're not going to win. Cameron appears to have learned his lesson and he moves on from Lauren. Doesn't even try to defend himself. He's like, wait a second. I'm going to lose this. Let me just keep it moving. (laughs) (laughs) We still, we still, like, I wish that there could have just been two stories. Whatever Cameron was going to say, whatever Claire wants to say or Emily wants to say, but that's not what happened. So Brennan is now back to, so we went to a bar after Cameron and Claire were separated and Emily and I were moving past, doesn't even get to finish the sentence. Crosstalk, crosstalk, because I just people going back and forth. And then Emily stores off. She's done. This is fucked up. I could not tell you what Emily is so mad about. I don't think Emily could tell me either. <laughs> She's just upset. I think she just didn't know how to manage her emotions. And maybe it didn't turn out the way she thought, like how she said, America is going to be on my side and then it's just like uh maybe not with the way kevin is questioning me and maybe it was just a bunch of just different emotions that she just didn't know how to handle brennan says (laughs) brennan and claire go back and forth about when she and cameron were broken up and no one cares Emily is backstage talking to the camera says we have we have to keep on explaining she's disgusted i don't know what she's disgusted by Brennan is like, everything we say cannot be a lie. We go back to Emily. At this point, the only thing I noticed is that this, there's a pink clothes steamer on the table. I was like, really? Everything is pink. Um, <laughs> Bre- Emily, I guess, comes back. Oh, no. Emily is still backstage. And she's like telling a producer that they have no remorse. It's disgusting. Brennan is still back on stage saying everything we say can't be a lie. Lauren is like, let them get the words out and then you can call them out on it. Cameron wants to get starts out. We went to Union Station. <laughs> the marriages were over. He thought it would be funny. He looked at a couple of women and said, in a couple months, we can approach these two. And then Brennan asked Claire, well, why didn't you come to me, Brennan, and talk to me and ask if it was true? And Cameron says, you could have also come to me and asked if there was any truth. I'm like, so if... Claire was supposed to come to you and ask if there was any truth. Where did Claire hear the story about the double date? I thought she heard it from Cameron. It's so strange. And also, even if they asked them, if they lied, then what? It still doesn't solve anything. But you're right. Who told who? But is Cameron lying, saying you could have asked me to cover his ass from being the one that told? Ugh exhausting i told you i don't like when scenarios make me feel like i'm doing homework i don't need to figure out who's saying what make it clear to me like i'm five emily is getting herself together to come back claire said she's not saying anything she's not playing she will call her friend and her friend will tell the truth i don't know what her friend's supposed to tell the truth about claire and brennan are like go ahead then emily comes out and says she's not saying she doesn't want to say anything Kevin tries to say, like, well, if you're not going to say anything and you're upset, you don't have to be here. Emily snaps at him. This is, I'm, I'm not liking this. First Keisha, now Kevin. Like, calm yourself. You know, I didn't say this last time, but when Kevin told Emily to stop yelling, I was like, wait mm-hmm. a second. She's not yelling. <laughs> she was being, you know, forceful or whatever, but she actually wasn't yelling. And I didn't like it when Kevin told her to stop yelling. Mm-hmm. Um, this time, she is definitely snappy and rude. And then finally, Kevin is like, okay, if you want to sit here and be upset, but not defend yourself in any way, okay. At this point, Kevin, like us, has given up and says, let's just leave it where it is. (laughs) (laughs) Then they try to show us a never before seen clip of Chloe and Michael going clothes shopping at a vintage store. Oh, man. It was the weirdest non sequitur, you guys. (laughs) Chloe and Michael feel like addendums to the show that 
I just feel bad. The only them. because a lot of the focus is on the drama. Uh, yeah. And like the only kind of funny part about this whole clothing conversation was questions about Michael's clothing budget. Kevin says he's wearing more than that now. This type of stuff was wasted on me. I have no idea how much Michael's clothes cost. And then Chloe says, you lied to me. Why is this a season of lies in a very joking manner? And it was funny. Like I laughed so hard. <laughs> but no one else on the stage thought it was funny. <laughs> then they have they showed like a montage. Like I think when they went to the sex store, that was some of the funniest, most loose moments that we had in the show. That that would have been like nice, or at least showed their journey or something. I don't know. <sighs> Um, so then they have, like, this is just filler. They have this whole thing about, oh, they're famous now. Lauren is like, yeah, people recognize her, but it's good because she's kind and she's nice. And she would hate to curse somebody out. And they'd be like, I know who you are. Orion is very happy because on the flight over here, the flight attendant recognized him and he got a free whiskey. Lucky uh, it isn't me. <laughs> social media, like, People apparently went after Chloe in the bidding because they thought she was the runaway bride. Um, and then she talks about how her social media is private. So she, all you people who might have followed her, she says she might not be confirming you. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to look for her. I can't find her. <laughs> I, I will admit I'm a little confused when people say things that social media is private. It's literally the opposite of private. But if you want to keep your circle small, you go ahead, Chloe. Well, I think she just means her account is locked. It's locked. And if you aren't people, she actually knows she doesn't want strangers following her is what I understood from this. Mm -hmm. Which is her right. Um, Austin. Oh, Michael enjoyed talking about how after the runaway bride, people were like, I want to get with you. Um, <laughs> and then Austin talks about how there was a whole article about how he likes to have one night stands. He was clearly really offended by this article. <laughs> <laughs> Emily said that once Brennan said he wasn't attracted to her, her DMs blew up. I can believe that. Um, yeah, that I totally see how that happened. Because we, I think a lot of people had a lot of sympathy for her because that wasn't cool. Um, yeah. Claire is now sitting cross-legged on the chair. <laughs> She started talking about authenticity and healing and community and Cam says and things about growth and accountability and learning and accountability and growth. Chloe grew, says, don't ask for opportunities to grow if you're not ready for them. It was transformational. Uh, Emily says that she's not going to try to for potential. I mean, everybody's talking about their final lessons, but I would kill these people if I had to sit there all day and just repeat myself over and over and over again. Growth, learning, transformation. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, trust yourself. Give love freely. That, that was a summation of what everybody said. Nothing really good there, if you ask me. You are absolutely right. I do want to point out, though, like, it's so funny. Like, I think a lot of Emily's feedback or whatever the word is, is just because of her reaction afterwards, because she absolutely had a leg to stand on. Brennan was a dick. Mm -hmm. Forget about her reaction. Let's not forget. Brennan was a dick. And she absolutely had a leg to stand on, but it was just the reaction after where she kind of absorbed the other girls' journey, made it into one, started like... I don't know, lashing out and operating on that and all that. And I think that's what kind of lost a little bit of the steam. But at the end of the day, just to reiterate again, Brennan was a dick to her. It's really weird. For most of the season, everybody was team Emily and Brennan is a dick. It wasn't until she started going crazy on Keisha, joining the pink brigade and just kind of, Losing it a little, which everybody's entitled to lose it, especially when you go through stuff. But she squandered a lot of goodwill. <laughs> like, she really mm. didn't have to say much. And we would have firmly been on her side. Yeah. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. 
So Kevin ends by telling us that there's been 17 seasons and 69 couples. And he says they cleared the air, which is a highly optimistic observation of what happened at this reunion. (laughs) He thanks them all for being there. And he hopes everyone had a chance to say their piece. I don't really think they did, but I didn't really want to hear their piece. So we're, we're straight. And then they show us a preview of Chicago, which I think at one point you had asked me, where does Dr. Pia live? I don't know if she lives there, but apparently she's from Chicago. Yeah, she is. Um, Welcome they show to us my people. hometown. Welcome to my home. Yeah. So they show us people from Chicago, but then they show us a preview that doesn't show faces. So whether those people were the ones that were picked or they were just in a matchmaking special, who knows? I think they were the picked ones because they were wedding dresses and tuxes and stuff. So Yeah, but they didn't show us any of those people's faces. So they showed us people being interviewed. And so I was like, so are these the people? Because then why wouldn't you just show us their faces if they're the ones you picked? Every year they don't show us faces. This is how they they show us. They used to what? They don't show us faces, but they don't usually show us interviews with other people either. Oh, they, okay. They just show a preview with no faces. So I was like, well, why do we have faces and then no faces? Are the faces go along with the people with no faces? Or are they people who are in the matchmaking special who did get picked? And that's why you showed their faces. I don't know. Oh, okay. I didn't recall seeing any faces. That's why. That's why I was getting confused. Okay. Because I only saw the wedding people. With no faces. Okay. All cut up. We wish they would have given us a premiere date for Chicago, but we didn't get one. <laughs> the waiting game begins. I'm ready. I'm ready for new people. Um, all right, guys. But, but if there's, sorry, but if there's anyone who wants to know what they look like, as usual, Mass Fan has that up. So if you want to see what the couples look like, those are there. So yeah, we, we, we have some intelligence on Chicago, but we don't have a premiere date. But we will, of course, be covering season 18 of Married at First Sight. So come find us. And we're going to have some great stuff in between. So don't leave us. Um, and you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at AlterCallMAFS. That's A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L-M-A-F-S. We love hearing from you guys on social media. Tell us what you thought of Reunion Part 2. Tell us if you don't want to ever hear about these Denver people again. Just give us give us all your thoughts. All your thoughts. And so you don't miss any episode because in between, we're going to be freestyling. We are going to do the Where Are They Now, like um, Aid said. But well, since we're going to be freestyling, and if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe. Please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And we'll see you guys next time with the Where Are They Now episode. And also join our Patreon because we'll also be giving episodes on there. We have 90 Day Fiance, and we'll have another one on there pretty soon. All right, guys. Till next time. Bye. Bye.